Welcome to episode three of Pop Culture Beasts uh, Halloween Horror Picks. I'm your host, Ryan Stockstead, director of Eggs, a Horror Movie, starring Lynn Lowry and Dwayne Whitaker, now funding on Kickstarter. And today we're going to talk about a campy cult classic from 1959. Those who hunt by night will tell you that the wildest and most vicious of all animals is the tiny shrew. The shrew feeds only by the dark of the moon. He must eat his own body weight every few hours or starve. And the shrew devours everything. Bones, flesh, marrow, everything. In March, first in Alaska, and then invading steadily southward, there were reports of a new species, the giant killer shrew. That's right, before he was Roscoe Coltrane in the Dukes of Hazard, James Best played Thorne Sherman in The Killer Shrews. Directed by special effects pioneer uh, Ray Kellogg, uh, who was the head of special effects at Warner Brothers throughout most of the 50s. Uh, the movie also stars uh, Ken Curtis and Ingrid Goud, or Ingrid Goud. I'm not 100% sure how to say her name. The Killer Shrews was featured in season four of Mystery Science Theater 3000, and I think a lot of people uh, consider it a bad movie because of that. Um, uh, not I. I actually think it's a, a, a pretty successful little horror movie. I think it works on many levels. I think it's genuinely scary. Um, of course, it's, it's indeed campy, but uh, I, I think this is a, a kind of much maligned uh, and unjustly so horror movie. Um, just check out the uh, the plot. Uh, essentially, a bunch of people are trapped on an island in an adobe-walled structure during a hurricane while a pack of hungry, wild, mutant, giant shrews attempt to claw their way through the walls to eat them. Uh, if that's not a recipe for awesome, I don't know what is. How could you expose all our lives, yourself included, with those things out there? All you had to do was get the Coast Guard or the Navy to come in here and burn them out. Okay, the group of people consists of a bunch of scientists. There's a pretty blonde uh, Swedish woman, of course. And uh, our hero is played by James Best. And there's this like smarmy, uh, asshole villain in the piece and they're all trying sort of trapped together trying to survive this siege of attacking shrews uh, as for the shrews they're mostly played by either puppets or dogs wearing uh, costumes like furry costumes with tails on them um, a lot of people feel that uh, you know that's what makes it kind of cheesy and of course it is but I think that the effects are actually pretty effective um, I think that the, uh, the shrews uh, look pretty cool uh, when they're trying to break through, and I think uh, the, uh, the, they're actually a little bit scary. It really helps that the sound design is pretty good, the audio of the wind, you know, the hurricane winds ripping through the, uh, uh, the island uh, adds a real eerie sort of atmosphere to the piece, and every time the shrews appear there's this like really uh, grating sound. It's all very effective and I think, uh, I think it's actually quite a creepy, uh, albeit very campy movie. The Killer Shrews was a regional Texas horror movie. Um, it was made as part of a co-production with the giant Gila monster, uh, another movie that I think is quite effective and fun. Uh, but I think that one's a little bit funnier, not quite as good. I think the Killer Shrews is pretty effective. Uh, the two pictures were very successful. In fact, uh, the Killer Shrews is regarded as the one of the most successful regional films ever made. Uh, it actually had national distribution, and actually had some foreign sales as well. And I'm not the only one who thinks The Killer Shrews is actually a pretty decent horror movie. 
Uh, one of its most famous champions is Stephen King, who mentions it in his book, Dance Macabre, where he cites it as uh, one of the uh, finest horror pictures ever made. Uh, also, reportedly, George Romero is a fan. Um, he famously borrows elements from the film, including the film's score, in his classic horror movie, Night of the Living Dead. The movie has quite a cult following and actually spawned a sequel, 2012's Return of the Killer Shrews, in which James Best reprises his role and uh, Bruce Davison plays the Ken Curtis role. So if you're looking for a fun and campy horror movie this Halloween, look no further than The Killer Shrews. I recommend it. I think it's much better than its reputation suggests. And I think you'll find that it actually has some scares in between the laughs. Thanks again for watching episode three of Pop Culture Beast Halloween Horror Picks. I'm your host, Ryan Stockstead, director of the upcoming horror movie Eggs, starring Lynn Lowry and Dwayne Whitaker. Uh, now funding on Kickstarter. Please go check us out. Uh, in fact, we have a contest. If you're the first person to go make a pledge, uh, any dollar amount, can be a dollar, can be a thousand dollars, we don't care. Go make a pledge and leave a comment in the comment section. That's very important. Don't just send us a message. Leave us a comment and tell us that you watched episode three of Halloween Horror Picks and tell us the name of the movie represented on my t-shirt. It should be real easy this time. If you do that, we will send you a Crown Prince Productions movie pack and uh, with whatever reward you're, you're, you're already getting. You can also like us on Facebook. You can follow our Twitter feed. And if you haven't already done it, be sure to follow Pop Culture Beast on their Twitter feed and subscribe to the Pop Culture Beast YouTube channel. Uh, thanks again for watching. Watch horror movies. I'll see you next time.